Hey there, Kwame here with a tutorial for Square Skills. This is a Squarespace tutorial taking advantage of the new two column mobile layout that Squarespace has introduced. It's really useful because natively you're limited to one column on Squarespace 7.1, which looks like this. Um, and you can ignore this top that this is just uh, the Square website's universal filter. I can link to that if anyone's interested in the description. Really useful um, plugin for filtering and sorting through your products. Great for user experience. But let's focus on what we're doing now. Right now we have this single column layout, which can be a bit big, especially in examples like this, where my wonderful client, Danielle, has volunteered her site for this demo. She uses these two, three aspect ratio images, which are quite tall. So on mobile, maybe it's not ideal. Um, so yeah, let's put in this two column layout. I'm in the mobile view. I'm gonna select edit. I'm gonna highlight my section. And this is on the shop page, the product page, edit the section. And I'm just gonna bump it up to two columns. And that's it. It works with universal filter, obviously, as well. But it's as easy as that to add in this two column layout. I'm gonna let the page refresh really quickly. And then I'm gonna show you a few little things that we can do it. So the first one I'm gonna do is just uh, change number of columns. So if we open the inspector, yeah, and I'm gonna use this little arrow up here in the top left on Chrome, hover here where we can see the little gap between columns there, select that. That's our list grid. On the right hand side here, we can see there's a media query and that's what's giving grid template columns here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna copy this. I'm going to select after the media query to the bottom and then I'm gonna do a left curly bracket and it will wrap that nicely shorthand there. So we've got our media query, mobile. I'm using Squarespace as one to keep it consistent, avoid clash. And then we've got our selector and all of our CSS. I'm just going to delete everything except for grid template columns. And honestly, you could basically just do something like uh, one FR, one FR, one FR, and that'll change things. Let's put an important there um, and let's save, and then let's refresh the. Excuse me pulling up my inspector here um, and then I'm going to refresh the page because I think my, one of the extensions I've got on Chrome at the minute is preventing the live preview of CSS. It's a little bit annoying for this demo purposes but you probably won't encounter this. So when my when we reconnect you can see ooh, really it's that easy to change the number of columns. Uh, you'll notice compared to the original CSS, I'll just repaste that there, they're using the repeat function. Annoyingly, uh, the less preprocessor doesn't support that. So if you want to use the repeat function, uh, um, repeat probably rather, you'd have to insert directly into the page or uh, sorry, the page header or the website code injection using style tags. I'm not going to show you that because honestly, two columns or one column are pretty much ideal. You can control them natively. So here's the fun stuff. Let's, instead of changing the number of columns, let's, uh, let's have every third item span two columns. I'm going to change this little query here. So I'm going to right click on and inspect and there's one of our items, but that's actually, if you look up to the anchor, that's the link. Swipe up a bit and we've got there, there's the class, grid item. So let's do, add that here. I've got a space grid item, because it's a separate, uh, sorry, it's the grid item class isn't attached to the list grid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do grid column span two. I'm also gonna add in colon nth child three. Save that, uh, right click, and I'm going to reload this frame just so that it refreshes. Let's see how that's looking. It's 
and look, we've got every third item is growing. Now, I actually happen to have some CSS further down that's hiding the first item, hence why it looks a little bit off here. <laughs> um, but what that's doing is every third item is now enlarged, like it's a feature item. We can play with this, though. We could say, let's inspect again. So if you look in here, and I know it's a little bit busy, but we've got all of these classes applied to elements. So I could say, for example, just looking at these, so category lip balm, category beauty, for the brand, blah, 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 blah. I can say, right, we have, let's go for always in fashion. So that's one of the uh, tags we're using on this site here. So I can say every grid item, remove this empty child, dot option always in fashion. Every grid item, and the, um, the option is, um, yeah, selecting more specifically only those particular items. I want only those items to span to. I am going to make it one little addition here, though. I'm also, to remove this little gap, I'm going to copy this first part. So products, collections, content wrapper, list grid, put it above. Open some curly brackets, and uh, I am going to add another prop, which is going to be grid auto flow dense. And what that does is it makes the grid fill any empty spaces so we don't get gaps. Let's save that. Let's right click, reload the frame. And when it refreshes, cool. So these are all always in fashion items, they're spanning two. Um, I think we've probably got quite a lot of items like that, but ah, here we go. So other items that aren't are just a single column. Now, I didn't pick the best selector for this demo, but this would be really useful for perhaps your featured items. Um, so any specifically any specific items that you really want to highlight in the, in the uh, feed, in the list, in the grid rather, could span two columns. And you can actually take this over to desktop. So right now, obviously, we're using a media query. Let's actually take this grid auto flow dense. Let's pull it outside the media query so it'll work on desktop and mobile. And do you know what? Let's do something for desktop too. Let's say, um, I'm going to right click, inspect. Let's look for a good tag here maybe one that isn't quite as common. Let's just say, uh, how about only options that have this brand T-Spressor class? Or we could use tag brand T-Spressor. Let's take that. So grid item dot brand piece presser. I'm going to pull this out of my media query because I want it on desktop as well. And I'm going to say, uh, uh, we name this uh, feature piece presser. Now, one thing we're actually going to want it to do is we're also going to want to have a grid row span to in this case this is simply because on desktop well you know let me show you what it'll look like so i'm going to save that i'm going to re reload the frame and in a second when everything loads back in you'll see we're getting that gap again even though we've got the grid order flow dense on if we set it to span two and we're going to reload the page, reload the frame again. Now, our grid is filling in those gaps. Now, this obviously isn't ideal, potentially, if you're using lots of portrait images like this. I tend to find it works better with square images. But it's nice for creating a little bit of a masonry effect here. And obviously, with the grid auto flow dense, 
it's filling in the gaps. And you can really play with this um, using grid column and grid row, I believe, but I'll double check. We don't need the mobile query for this. Sorry, we don't need a separate mobile query for the span two because it just sort of auto calculates. Yeah, we're all good to go. But yeah, you can really work with this. And this is a fantastic way to leverage a really nice tagging and category system that Squarespace has to make for more interesting layouts in your shop. You can actually use something similar with your blogs, but I'm not going to go into that. But yeah, to sort of recap, so you want to use this max width 767 pixels if you want things only to target mobile. Um, you could mix this up more and add a collection ID list right at the beginning if you only wanted this to apply to specific shop collections. Um, but fundamentally, it boils down to two things. Add the order flow dense property to uh, the list grid and then target specific items. So it's this one, the grid item targets the item and then the uh, combo class for the tag or category or featured or whatever. And using grid column and grid row. Generally, it's going to be span two, but I mean, we can, you know, I'll show you another example just to mix it up a little bit more. I'm going to ditch this um, media query because we don't need it. Let's say um, extra small, or sorry, extra large uh, items. I'm going to have a little inspect. I haven't decided which one, which items I want this to apply to. Let's say, for example, um, how about It's something that's kind of, so we've got quite a lot of lip balms here. Um, I need a little bit of a think. You know what? Let's just pick a specific item. Let's go with this one. Can you see there's an ID here for, for lip tint, Farah, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to copy that. Uh, you can see I've accidentally <laughs> reordered the grid, but ignore that for the moment. So I'm going to do a uh, hash, and then I'm going to do the ID. I'm going to get rid of this last bit, tag, brand, t espresso, etc. And I'm going to say span three, span three. Save that, refresh. This is probably not going to look great, but this is more just to demonstrate things, interesting things you can do as applications of this. So here we go. Now we've got one massive item spanning three columns. That's a real big feature. This is more for desktop. Others that are only spanning two. And you can really, really play with this. Targeting either specific items using their ID. Targeting groups, categories, tags using the combo class. Or using the nth child selector. You can just say every second item, every third item, every 26th item, just the odd ones, just the even ones, etc. I'm not going to illustrate all of these examples, but if you look up um, you know, CSS selectors for nth child or nth of type, it can help you with this. I uh, hope this has been useful. Uh, if it has, you, know, you can like, subscribe, buy me a coffee, etc. And... If you have any more queries, questions, just yeah, ping me a message and I'll be more than happy to respond.